a precursor to 20th century conservatism was Alexander Hamilton. John Adams was another, and George Washington was another. Look at the program. Look, look at the program that the early Federalists put into practice. It wasn't a program of, of, of absolute minimalist government. It certainly wasn't anarcho-capitalism. It was basically a program of, of securing property rights, securing individual rights as they saw them. And they had, they had some blinders, but they, they saw them pretty well for their time. And then using government to try to boost competition, try to build markets. They saw some limited role for activist government. So the knee-jerk reaction of some small government conservatives and libertarians today that we can't have any government activism, that all it should do is defend the borders, I, I think is a mistake. And also, we haven't talked much about immigration today, but I also think that the hard line against immigration is worrisome if you want a limited government. A government that has the power to deport a lot of people, it has the power to figure out exactly who's hiring whom, is a government that has a lot of power. That's an issue where, in my judgment, John McCain, even though he may have some flaws, has been pretty good. I think if you look at the whole range of issues, and if you're concerned about limiting government to a reasonable degree, you'll find a good deal of merit in John McCain. You'll also find some merit in Bob Barr, but he's not going to win. And you will find very little merit in Barack Obama, although maybe on a few issues he'd be good from this perspective as well. But you have to be worried that the Democratic Party, the Democratic base, is going to expand government in many different ways if the next president is a Democrat, the Congress is majority Democrats, the state legislatures are predominantly Democratic. There's going to be a real problem here, and you're going to have a lot to be angry about in the next four years. Some of us are angry now at this thing, coach for the federal government into our lives. Yeah. And, you know, we need, to, we need to take a stand. You don't have to deliberate over the subtle differences of whether McCain is more free market or Obama or who will spend more, McCain through the military, Obama through socialized medicine, the host of other status policies. You have the opportunity to send a message to the world that you're sick of Democrats becoming socialists and sick of Republicans becoming Democrats. It's time for fiscal conservatives to say to Mr. McCain, there is a line you will not cross, there is a point we will not yield. Well, Mr. McCain, you crossed it. And it's time for fiscal conservatives and libertarians to cross that line as well. For as freedom and well-being are inseparable in a nation. My voice and my vote and my conviction are as well. I will have the pleasure of voting my conscience on this first Tuesday in November. I vote for Bob Barr. Character is doing the right thing when no one is looking. No one will be looking this first Tuesday in November. I urge you to vote your conscience and vote Bob Barr. Okay. All right now. Uh, our own little local exercise in democracy. We're going to vote on what you think of the uh, debate question. And after that, hopefully, maybe we can get uh, a little comment from the man under debate during during this whole process before he escapes. Uh, so right now, I'm going to ask you to. Uh, I'm going to ask you to. Until you win. Uh, I'm going to ask you to raise raise your hands to show Wait, your before, position. Before before we do this, this is proper voting procedure. If you are voting for something like this, straight up. Or it won't be counted. Yeah, if you're going like, then frankly, we wish then you would we, just, then, just leave. Then just we have to recount and recount yeah. and recount. It's very annoying. No. So yes. decide first, and then way up in the air, and leave and it, keep it up until we're done counting. Okay. So the first question again. First, we'll do the yeses. Should conservatives and libertarians vote for Barr instead of McCain? If you think the answer is yes, put your hand in the air. Avery cannot count. <laughs> Nor can Mr. Barr. Okay, you can put your hands down. Thank you. And now that was the best voting we've ever had. <laughs> that's almost as many votes as Bob Barr will get in November. Oh, that's oh. Oh. Good, good with the hand raising. Okay, and now if you think the answer is no, uh, conservatives and libertarians should not vote for Barr instead of McCain. Raise your hands. Okay, and so by a vote of roughly two to one, uh, the Lolita Barr crowd believes that yes, Conservatives and Libertarians should vote for Barr instead of McCain. Uh, good evening, 
Con con congratulations to the Pro Bar faction. And uh, uh, before we all flee to uh, to uh, to drink and so forth, uh, I, I hope I can I, I can get uh, Representative Barr to make a comment. Uh, and I just want to say before before uh, we ask him to stand up uh, that uh, we have gatherings like this once a month, and they're not always as uh, intra movement or political. In fact, normally I would consider it irresponsible of me to wear a partisan T-shirt like this anti-Hillary read defeat communism in 2008 shirt. But you know I don't know how much longer it'll be relevant, so I. I better wear it tonight. Uh, normally, I would try to seem impartial, but uh, uh, next month uh, we have, we will, for instance, have a very different event on July 22nd. We will have a panel discussion with four women who have sold their eggs, not from chickens, but from themselves, <laughs> talking about what it was like, uh, what they learned biologically and economically and morally for, the, for their whole process, uh, and their philosophies differ. Uh, and one of them is a libertarian who might be known to you, Kerry Howley, an editor at Reason Magazine, uh, will be one of our participants, uh, but also uh, uh, feminist comedian Jen Desura, who has been a debater here a couple of times before, uh, an evolutionary psychology expert named Diana Fleischman, uh, and a beautiful five foot ten Foucault studying grad student who's done some modeling and acting named Valerie Bronte. They, it, it's kind of like eugenics with the uh, the egg sales. You know, like if you're if you're five ten and gorgeous and brilliant, they they tend to pay more for the eggs. But anyway, that'll be July twenty second. Uh, and, and don't forget Carrie Howley if you're telling your libertarian friends about it. And I'll email everybody who signed up. If you haven't signed up yet, grab this and I'll send you a harmless once a month email. Or Google us at debates at lolitabar.com. I'm sorry, <laughs> Go, just Google us at de debates at Lolita Bar. Um, and now, before you all escape to drink and argue about politics, I hope that Representative and Presidential Candidate Barr will favor us with a comment on the proceedings. Or whatever else is